Okay. While I'm waiting, because this recording is going to be up on YouTube later, I wanted to give a huge, huge thank you and shout out to my Patreons. That's April, Ali, Daphne, Ariel, Kara, Hallie, Amanda, Caitlin, Julie, Emily, Elisa, or Alyssa, uh, Chivadagger, <laughs> Elizabeth, Lisa, Rob, Laura, Mel, Emily, and Nick. Thank you so much for supporting my work, and I hope you've also been enjoying the content. <laughs> Hi everybody! How are we doing this evening? I just started this and it's just me tonight which is new because I have so often had, um, <laughs> Queen, thank you, uh, I've so often had other folks on my lives and I uh, got some requests that I should just go live and answer questions myself. So here I am doing that. <laughs> Hi everybody! I'm enjoying these usernames. Thanks Lucy! Um, but yeah, I posted a video today talking about things concerning George and all of that, that I never went into detail entirely on TikTok about. And over the next week, I'm going to be posting every day something that I didn't tell you all before because it honestly scared me. <laughs> So I'm looking to make those posts around noon uh, Eastern Standard Time. So please check back every day and I will be posting those videos. There's a lot I didn't share with all of you just because I was still coping with it. There is, generally speaking, a four month delay on when things happen so that I can process and check with myself to be sure that I do wanna post the content that I make. And I've been removed enough from the situation itself to be able to speak properly. Okay, so my Welsh mother <laughs> asks, who is Jensen? Okay, so that's not his actual name. It is Jimothy's older brother. And uh, Jensen is a name that I used for the first time in one of my YouTube videos on uh, the end of George. He was like Adam's like second for a little while because uh, he stayed out on Sorsha's porch for a little while. <laughs> um, uh, then you have some numbers behind your name. Said a little prayer to Hermes before your workout. Uh, got more than, than you bargained for. That's usually how it works. Uh, I, before I like do a seriously a serious workout, I uh, consider that an act of worship, not only to myself and my own body and my health, but also to Hermes. And I'll tell you what, I've I have been pushed in a good way, in a very good way. I've I've gone farther than what I would have expected, and that's been really good. Um. You're about to watch my video uh, on YouTube about George. Yeah, I hope you get to doing that. Um, so, I have not read the book, Layla. Um, you just got here, what's happening? So, I just started this. I'm answering questions on George. If I'm going to answer them, or my experience with George, or like things that are confusing, um, I already have some questions that I wrote down from the comments section, and this is gonna be uh, the recording. Thanks, Salt Wave Spanish Moss. Um, if you're ever going to Savannah, Georgia, you definitely, or at least have an appreciation for Savannah, Georgia, you should so be following Salt Wave Spanish Moss because she is a historically accurate ghost tour guide. Spooktastics, yay! And if you're not following Spooktastics, she's also been making videos about George because she met him herself. <laughs> um, wow, it's like a party in here. Hi, everybody. Let's see. Yeah, to ma'am, uh, this is, yeah, Jensen, uh, Jimothy does have an older brother, <laughs> um, but he is so not into all of this, and that's why I never mentioned him before. Oh, thank you. Uh, Jamie said the final um, George video was phenomenal. What a journey and culmination of learning and work so far. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Uh, oh, yeah, um, one of my Patreons, Joan. Hi. Yes, thanks for asking it. Um, I, I hope that answered it. Um, I did go to my Patreons to ask uh, what questions they had as well. So I will be answering those. Hi, <laughs> thank you. Um, for the people who say that they have not met me before, but they feel like they know me, apparently my past lives have been getting around. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it. Uh, I've been on TV a few times. Um, when I was living in DC, I was on TV a number of times for uh, investigation discovery shows. Goodness, it seems like so long ago. It was like 10 years ago. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. 
I'm glad all of you were able to catch this live. Super cool. Thanks for the gifts, everybody. Thanks, ma'am. Um, so, would I ever do a reenactment of what happened to George? No, because <laughs> TikTok wouldn't allow it. Like, he bled out of the wound that actually killed him in life. And I don't even know if I can even say all the words that I just said now and still be okay on TikTok. So, uh, that would be way too gory. <laughs> <laughs> I for a long time literally for four months <laughs> thanks cat uh I was like how 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 do I even do that because I wasn't even there most of the time it was just Alice was looking in on the situation Source was looking in the situation I wasn't allowed because Rupert was like mm, I'm gonna handle this for you because this has gotten really bad um and then I did my handling and broke the tie but you know that's that's a thing um Yay! Thanks for thanks for the compliments, folks. Um, so, if the name wasn't actually George, do I know for sure that it was Lewis? Yes, uh, I cannot mention who's Jay's, who Jay's patron is. That is private. However, she had no reason to lie, and she was also at the courthouse that night too. So. Um, it was also confirmed, the name Lewis, whether it was his first or his last name, we don't know. It was also confirmed by Alexander and the other spirits who were there to antagonize him, to get him to kind of be not okay so that they could do what they needed to do. Um, that was the name that they were chanting at him, and that was something that Alice heard. So that's, that's a good question. I'm sure other people had that question too. Um... Important question for your projects, for me, for shows Rupert and Jimothy might have seen. Shows, like TV shows? I don't watch a lot of TV. <laughs> um, that's actually something, uh, mm, some authors when they're writing a lot, they are very specific about what they watch on TV because um, it kind of, messes with them. So I really watch TV and like movies. I watch them very seldomly. Um, also because I'm just doing so much recently. So yes, I'm very okay. Uh, oh, I'll be live for at least another hour. Um, and yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I, I am doing fine. Thank you for asking. Remember all this stuff happened four, four months ago. So I've been of course keeping keeping my contact or keeping my mental health in check and um i've come a long way in a long in a very short amount of time it seems like it could have been a year ago but it's not um why didn't frederick take george on all hallows eve uh that was not his assignment that's what i'll say hi buddy did you want to be in the live say hello Say hello. Yeah, you are famous travel channel cat. Yeah, isn't that great? Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Everybody, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Let's see, from Romania, hi. How do I learn more about past lives? Me personally, I had a regression through soul signs hypnosis and those videos have been posted on the Scots, uh, uh, ghost skits playlist as well. And um, I am also, I've learned how to regress back to the lives that I've already visited, specifically um, more in depth with Mary's past life. So I don't have to do a full regression anymore in order to get back to that past life, but that did take practice. Um, someone asked, was Hermes present during everything that went down at the courthouse? Um, no, not because Sorsha would have known. Um, she is a priestess of Hermes, so that's a thing. He wasn't there, but he knew of what was going on, but he did assist in, um, taking the shade that was George, uh, to the River Six at the end of all of it, um, from what I understand. I actually don't know a lot of things about Greek mythology and the afterworld and stuff like that. So I'm just like learning about all of this stuff. I'm like, oh, so that's where they go. Okay. Um, 
so yeah um okay was it a slow progression of realizing George was a narcissist um yes for me uh it was I have had other close people in my life who were narcissists and um I didn't realize all the warning signs so and I especially didn't expect them from a ghost because I I had never been hurt psychologically from a spirit before so it, I, I wasn't looking for that I guess uh, I didn't think that I mattered that much to him for a very long time he acted like I was just some entertainment on a slow day that kind of thing uh, I, I never I was very fooled by all of it because I never expected that I was important to him even if it was for his own selfish needs <laughs> so um, yeah let's see Uh, um, have I ever blocked unable to interact with spirits? If so, what helped? So if I'm blocked, it's usually to do with my mental health. <laughs> so I always say that if you have shadow work to do, which is also mental health, by the way, um, if you have things that are blocking your mental health, uh, do what you can to address them. Whether that's uh, taking to a meditation that uh, handles specific subjects. Like for me, I was carrying a lot of grief for a lot of years and I didn't realize that until really, goodness, it was only a year ago that I was finally able to handle that. Um, but that's my journey. Different things will block different people. And that's one of the things that I work with people on consultations or also a general consultations. Um, it doesn't always take mediumship to ask people the right questions of like, where did the block happen? Why did it happen? And how do we start to teach ourselves that it's safe to open up at our own pace? That is something I work with people on. So yeah, all that information's on my website. Um, do ghosts keep ghost pets? Yes, they do. Uh, <laughs> I think it's safe to say Adam, who's Sorsha's companion, actually keeps a stingray. <laughs> and because the stingray uh, doesn't need water anymore in spirit, sometimes it's just around. <laughs> uh, but it does take a level of concentration, typically speaking, especially if the pet wasn't known to them when they were alive. Um... Okay, so the question is, uh, I've said that George is out of the reincarnation cycle. What exactly does that mean? So, okay, that is a good question. So somebody, and I'm going to lead into this too, because somebody asked, they, they said that in comparison, other mediums have said that there is no forever of heaven or hell. And they were referring to my commentary on the underworld. So one thing I wanted to point out, and this is just me doing an energetic reading on the underworld. It's not me having done a lot of research. So if there's research out there from 300 years ago, thank you for the gifts that contradict this, then, you know, I could be wrong. And I'm okay with saying I could be wrong. Um, the underworld is neither heaven nor hell. Heaven and hell are very Christian standpoints um the underworld is not christian so it is different and the underworld in my understanding is a different plane of existence so that means that at some point if we wind up down there we may either need to do a significant change on the understanding that is our soul in order to re-enter another plane of existence or we need to wait um, so remember reincarnation is not specific to earth. There is other life out there, even if right now it's kind of up in the air as to what that other life is. So to be specific, George is out of this reincarnation cycle, at least for 
generations worth of time. And granted, time even works different on a spiritual level. So that's my understanding of it. Um, <laughs> I, I I don't think I, I, I'm thinking of something that, um, apologies, I don't have permission to say because it's not my story, but um, it was said that George is in timeout for an extended amount of time. So maybe think of it of that. And remember, George was a terrorizing person. He was just causing terrible catastrophe beyond my understanding in Wilmington on a spiritual level for over a hundred years. He was doing no good things. And it wasn't just to me, it was primarily to other spirits. But I know even in Kat's case, like she started to be targeted by him and that's her story to tell. But just after one meeting, he kept being like, hey, you know, why don't you want to come back? Like, don't you want to, you know, come see me and get Rebecca and like get Rebecca to come back and see me? Like it was totally whack. He was not okay. So if anybody has any fear about like, oh, what if I do something and it kicks me out of the reincarnation cycle? You're going to know that, you do that you're doing things that are morally wrong, okay? George was not in the dark about this. He had been warned repeatedly by messengers of Hecate that he was breaking the rules. So don't worry about that. Somebody also was like, they were upset with the idea of that souls might not have the opportunity for redemption. So my response to that is, well, they may get another chance on another plane of existence. Or if they're stripped of so much of what they are and they're just what's called a shade, um, as Sorsha put it, but also in um, Hellenistic understanding of what a soul is after it's just the existence of energy rather than the personality and the memories and everything like that. So maybe that shade, what it's called, turns into something or is reunited with something else or something like that. But it's important to note too, and this is something that Alice brought up to me today because I was kind of reviewing a few topics with her. We choose to do these things, whether it's before we enter this life cycle or if it's during. We always have a choice on what we do, how it affects ourselves and how it affects other people. George made a lot of choices. He knew what he was doing was entirely selfish and came at a cost to a lot of people. So that's on him. Um, and all the same, like I'm, I've done a lot of work on myself, on my mental health to not sit around and have resentment. And really the reality is for me, what happens to his soul it's not up to me. I, I, I really don't care uh, because he made his choices like I made mine. And what matters to me is that I'm safe and the people that I love, both physically and in spirit, are safe. So he made his choices. He has to figure that out um, as a something on another dimensional level at this point. But as far as like energy just being kicked out and going away forever, well, what if it's just a transfer to somewhere else? Thank you. Um, that's, that's what I have to say about that. That was a long rant. That was such a long rant. Okay, I'm gonna check some comments again. Uh, Cause I also have questions down here from the comments, that, uh, comments on my videos that I wanna answer. Um, let's see. Uh, hi people who are just saying hi. <laughs> Um, have I seen any Hindu or other gods? I might have. It's possible I just didn't recognize them. I, I'll admit, I was not polytheistic in my beliefs until very recently, like in the last few years. So I'm still learning about just the vast amount of spiritual energy that's out there, what name it has, and what's its calling card. So... That's why, for the most part, like I'll talk about the um, active work that I do with Hermes, because I know Hermes, um, and I've been doing work with him regularly for a while now, 
and I'll talk about Hecate because, hey, she, she came to my aid. <laughs> um, but for the most part, I will point out that if you're looking to learn about deities or if you're looking to connect with them, to go to people who have a broader basis of knowledge than I do. I can recognize energy. I don't always recognize if it's coming from a deity where that energy is linked to. So it's possible that I've run into um, other higher spirits before. I mean, I know I have, but I don't always know specifically who they are and they don't always wanna tell you. And that, that's, that's the beauty of life, I guess. Um, so things are a mystery sometimes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Just going through some comments, seeing what folks are saying. Um, yeah, thanks for the thanks for the crane. Okay, uh, I am going to stick to some more questions on George, just because I'm really strong about kind of ending this chapter of all of this. Um, so other general questions, I will look back at uh, towards the end of the live. Uh, and some of those general questions have also been answered in lives past that are posted on my YouTube, just like this one will be posted on my YouTube. P.S. Um, for more information on George, if anybody's out there going, wait, was he bad? I do not understand. How did this happen? I'm just saying again, for anybody who's new, um, there were a lot of things I didn't post about because they made me really uncomfortable. And there are still some things that I am intentionally vague about because they really messed with me at the time. And I'm going to be putting out videos for the next week on those so that people understand a bit more of how not great George was, how much he crossed the line. Because I understand if you're looking at my reenactments alone, that could be confusing. And that's because I was not doing reenactments of the things that were psychologically terrifying to me. Uh, so that's that. And I can be honest about that. Um, but I can't talk about them because it's been over four months. Uh, for some instances, it's been over six months for when these things have happened. So do check back every day this week. Looks like I'll be posting around noon every day. That's Eastern Standard Time. And of course, if you are one of my Patreons with exclusive content, I've already posted all those videos at once because that's what I do for my Patreons. Um, there's a uh, an option tier that whenever I do reenactment videos, I usually film between six and eight at a time. And for my Patreons, so that they don't have to wait every day, I will post all of them at once in one chunk of a video. So they just get to sit down and watch 20 to 30 minutes of content rather than waiting every day. So thanks, Patreons. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, George acted really sweet. He did, because he wanted me to trust him. So it, once again, if you're really confused about that, um, one, you can go through my Ghost Gets playlist and see how things started to go downhill. Um, but also, once again, as I said, check back this week. I'll be posting videos every day on a lot of content that I did not share because it was really bad. Um, okay, so I have these other questions from comments that I wanted to answer. Um, and some of these things I will um, answer in the video, so I don't want to give too much away, but maybe I will. Um, so, yeah, uh, I will mention something to George's character, specifically what changed over time, and part of this I think was in a video that I put out today, but it's going to be in other videos as well. Um, if George showed his true colors at the very beginning, I would not have talked to him. That's how it works. I mean, he's, he turned out to be like a true villain. And I don't say that lightly. Like, I really do believe most people are absolutely redeemable. Uh, and I've met a lot of people. <laughs> so, of course he came on very kind, very charismatic, very charming because he wanted me to trust him. Like there were times when I was really upset and he would just listen. 
And looking back in hindsight, which I'm doing a lot as I'm writing my book, which uh, if you want updates on that, follow uh, my website newsletter. I don't, I don't spam people. I put like a newsletter out every quarter. Um, but when I do publish that book or when I'm ready to do pre-releases or even just send out snippets uh, for fun, um, that's where I'm going to be putting it out. But as I'm looking back and rather than living it through firsthand perspective, I'm kind of trying to live it from a third person perspective so that I can gain a less biased understanding for this book. I'm looking back at my own memories and being like, dude, he was, he would throw like sideways comments at me and then he would cover it up. Like he hadn't even said it and he'd just be like, oh, maybe you perceived differently. Or maybe, oh, weren't you saying that you were still opening up to all of this? and that you didn't always hear me, maybe you heard incorrectly. I would never say that. He threw that at me a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, so, yeah, a lot changed. And really the biggest, biggest thing that really threw me through a loop was how hard he tried to distance me from the people who were closest in my life. This started first with Sorsha, this was at the live at the courthouse. She had met him before. Um, I think that was JJ. Thanks, JJ. Uh, and she started to pick up on things, and he could pick up on, you know, her ability to see farther and faster than me because she's been doing this for far longer than I have. Um, I, for anybody wondering or not, yes, I did close off my abilities for a little while and uh, had to reopen them, which has been a process. But Sorsha didn't do that, so that's why she's very advanced. Um, thank you for the gifts. But um, yeah, she picked up on more than what he wanted her to. And so from there, he tried to distance her, not only from himself, but from me, because he realized at a very early time that she was very powerful. And I'm gonna be going into more of that uh, when she actually served jury duty. There's a crazy story, as in like, it's crazy awesome, that happened to her concerning George. Um, that was in October of 2021. I never told it to you here, but I will this week. But yeah, he tried to distance me from Sorsha. He tried to distance me from Rupert. And he tried to distance me from Jay. And it was just like, <sighs> I, I stopped bringing people around him because he wasn't nice. And then when I was, you know, when I was alone with him, suddenly he was just so nice again. But then when I brought people I cared around him, he would suddenly be cruel or he would say very sideways comments at them. So yeah, it, it was, it was not sudden. And I think that's the scary thing when you're dealing with uh, an abusive person, a narcissistic person. It's never sudden. It's little things over time, but they're so small at the time that you don't realize them until you're in very deep. So uh, this leads me to another question. A lot of people have been asking, is George a demon? Sometimes people are just bad people. And their ability to prey upon other people makes them feel more powerful and gives them strength. But my situation with George, it just so happens he's a ghost. And he was taken care of, so to speak, by a deity and other ghosts that were involved. But yes, all of this is on my YouTube if you missed it. Um... But how is that any different from a person, a spirit in their skin suit who is held accountable by the authorities, by friends for what they've done, for the wrong that they've done? To me, it's really no different. It's just for the most part, a lot of people don't recognize that this happens spiritually as well. Um, it's not often from what I'm understanding and this is my conversation with Alexander, who's been doing a lot of work for like 300 years. Um, but it does happen. And something I will also point out, um, it's also this very major religion mentality that God 
what have you, or gods are omnipotent, that they know everything. In my experience, deities have a lot to do. <laughs> they know a lot of things, they can pick up on a lot of things, but sometimes making an offering to them, maybe with a request of, hey, this is happening to me, they might need that. It's, it's just like making a prayer. Um, at least with some of the deities I've been working with recently, they don't run around acting like they're omnipotent. They are like, oh, you need that? Oh, okay, cool. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so, yeah, and that is that is part of the work that I've been doing in consultations as well. Uh, it helps that Rupert has the position that he has right now, and it helps other people, and that's what matters to me. Something that Rupert and I share a great deal of anger about is when people are being tormented by spirits who actively mean them harm. Not spirits who are confused, spirits who actively mean them harm. And that's one thing through consultations or even through general consultations uh, with quick chats that when I'm made aware of these things, Rupert is made aware of these things and Rupert works now for a much greater being who actually can take care of these things so um now that being said i have to reiterate again just because it scares you doesn't mean that it's bad uh that's where i come in as a medium to be able to be like oh this dude's just confused or like oh she just doesn't know where she is and that's what i've been doing in consultations that that i really am passionate about is finding the truth um through my experiences and learning as i have I don't just trust words anymore. I trust expression. One of my psychic abilities is also to read emotive response. And so rather than just hearing something or seeing something, I pick up on further truth of it. So that's something I've started to be able to offer and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about that. I, I feel like that matters. Um, there are a lot of mediums that primarily work with people's last, uh, past loved ones. There are mediums who primarily work with spirit guides. And while I do that, I feel like what I also do is unique. I try to find the soul in the scary spirit, whatever that might be. And that matters a lot to me because of all that I've been through, both good and bad. So, um... I'll look at the comments again. Hello, I went on a tangent because I apparently thought that was important. Um, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Um, just running through the comments. Thanks for all your kindness. I really appreciate it, both to me and to my ghostly family and my folks and to each other. I, I really appreciate how just wonderful so many of you are I mean just all these comments just you're helping each other out you're answering each other's questions and I, I just really appreciate that I cannot say that enough <laughs> let's see um, what's George's obsession with I'm assuming you mean Sorsha because uh, she's powerful <laughs> And he doesn't like being um, second. <laughs> and she's a close friend of mine. And he knew that she could easily get between us. So he just tried to dis distance her as much as possible. But that being said, too, she really wrung him out when she went in for jury duty because he had already been up to a lot of things that were not so good. A lot of things I hadn't been sharing on here because they scared me, um, which I will be sharing this week through my videos. Um, I do, I will be posting every day, but ooh, ooh, she, mm, she, she didn't even do everything she could have done. <laughs> I love her so much. Um, so... Yeah, I'm glad that my tangent was helpful. <laughs> uh, does everyone have the ability to do what I do? Um, I think to some extent, yes, depending on who you're working with. I always say if you're starting out with this, to start with your guides, to start with um, those you know, so like past loved ones, for example, 
and uh, to always trust yourself and remember that you can pull out whenever you want. Um, you can always say no, because remember, communication works both ways. That means consent works both ways. Um, don't listen to anything that's like, ah, you have to talk to me. No, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. But yeah, sometimes people really benefit from having someone else read for them or read their guides for them or read their past loved ones for them um, or read the spiritual energy that's around them, even if it's ghost. Um, sometimes people need that kind of confirmation for them to just simply trust their ability. And I do understand that. Um, there, there can be a lot of validation in having somebody you don't know who doesn't know your situation validate things for you. That's literally what I did, I think, for three of my consultations today. <laughs> Like they thought they were like, I think I know who's around me, but I don't want to say it. I'd like for you to read it and then tell me. And so I was like, okay. And I did a reading and they were like, great. I haven't been making this up. And I was like, apparently not. Uh, one of the readings, the person said, wow, this just confirmed a lot of things. I don't know if I learned anything. And I said, well, that means that one, you're on the right track for yourself. You can absolutely do this on your own. You can have this connection on your own. But, you know, sometimes it just helps to have somebody else say what's going on too when they have otherwise no idea what's going on. <laughs> uh, that's one thing for readings most recently. Like, I've, for some people, I'll just tell them, I'm like, okay, so this is generally what you want? Cool. Don't tell them anything else. <laughs> and then I will go into it and I'll be like, is this correct? Can you give me conversation? That being said, one of my favorite things to do is to work with people on building their confidence and building their own abilities. A lot of people are waking up right now, like on a universal level, a lot of people are waking up right now and um, a lot of people just need to be pointed in the right direction to feel like they're valid, um, to understand their abilities more. And that's another thing that I talk with people about and that means a lot to me. Honestly, my job as a medium is to inspire other people to be their own mediums when they can as far as who's around them. Um, I feel like I've done my job if people leave a session with me feeling like they have something they can work on on their own and feeling that they've been strengthened just by being seen. So that's how I'm different as a medium. I'm, I'm not looking for people to come back to me time after time after time. No, I would much rather people sit down with me, virtually speaking, um, and learn the tools that they have on their own to be able to make connections on their own. So that's that's the coolest thing for me. And I, I love hearing from people when I get follow-ups from people like emails or sometimes I go to quick chat because somebody's just like, ah, so much just happened and I had to tell you. And I'm like, that is awesome. Thank you. Um, that is the coolest thing for me because I figure the more spiritually awake people there are out there, the more we can help each other out to be better people and open-minded, caring, and respectful human beings. I think that's great. <laughs> so that's how I'm different as a medium. I much rather people learn this themselves than constantly come back to me. Not that I don't want to people to come back to me, but I'm just like, I want to encourage people to be able to do this on their own. Um, and that's what's most meaningful to me. Because if we're all in this together, then we're not so lonely. <laughs> um, so let's see, do I share physical traits with Mary? I don't think so. <laughs> um, her, she was a lot frailer. Uh, her nose was smaller. Um, I guess I'm looking at myself more to be like, her hair was lighter, um, a much lighter brown. Um, her cheeks weren't as round as mine. Um, her jaw was a bit thinner. Uh, her eyes were lighter. Um, and I believe she's a bit taller than me, not by much, but by some, um, but yeah, I don't think I share that many physical traits with her, to be honest, but granted, this is, you know, from over 300 years ago, and she's also not in my genetic family, so I think that kind of makes sense. Like, it's one of those things, like, if you were casting a movie, then... Like, I could maybe play a cousin of hers, but it, would, it wouldn't it would be, like, a genetic cousin. You know what I mean? Like, when they cast for movies and it's, like, 
maybe these people are related, but it's primarily I'm being told that they're related, so I believe it. That's what I mean. Um, so, oh yeah, Mary was very malnourished. Um, yeah, Mira's over there. <laughs> um, Mary had very little control in her life, and one of the few pieces of control that she had was controlling how much she ate. So, yeah. Um, and while we're on the subject of, I guess, similarities, that's something that I've struggled with in my life. And uh, I didn't know that was a past life tie. So it's been interesting this past year as I've been getting healthier, but I've also been losing weight um, by my own like effort, basically, to be more healthy. Um, like every so often, Rupert will be like, could you eat more? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm actually not hungry. Like I'm fine. Like I'm, I'm not in a bad state of mental health. Uh, but I just don't want to eat. And he's just like, maybe, maybe you could eat more. And I'm like, I, I'm fine. <laughs> like, that's the thing. As far as my weight is concerned, I'm, I'm very healthy, uh, which makes me very happy because, uh, at the beginning of last year, I was, you know, what weight is a number, but I wasn't happy with myself. That's what I should say. So, but that's me. That's my personal journey. I never put that on anybody else. That's just, um, that was just for me. So, um, hi, Australia. So, cool, cool, cool. I'm just reading through some of these comments. <laughs> Am I looking over to Rupert for confirmation? <laughs> um, generally in his direction, yes. Because <laughs> uh, he is, he's in the room, but he's not in here with me. <laughs> but yeah, I do check it with him. I'm like, hey, you remember her a lot easier than I do sometimes. <laughs> Why do I think I was drawn back to Wilmington this life? Well, apparently I had karmic things to break. I'm breaking a lot of karmic ties in this life. Like the thing that happened with George was not the only thing. Um, sometimes breaking karmic ties is simply by creating peace. Uh, I know for Jay, my partner, um, we are fixing karmic issues in this life and we have come a very long way and we've done so much. And so that gives me even more closure that most of my karmic connections are simply to be mended and forgiven rather than, you know, vengeance, like what happened with George. Uh, so that's, most of my karmic is good as far as like me fixing it. Um, but me being drawn to Wilmington, no one I know of from my family has ever lived here. And uh, I know they immigrated, part of my family immigrated from Scotland and they came through Wilmington in the 1700s, not at the same time um, Rupert was here. But uh, beyond that, I don't know. Uh, at the time that I moved here, I just knew I didn't want to live where I was anymore. And Jay was on the same page. And we were just like, you know what? Wilmington, why not? And that's how it started. And honestly, spiritualism aside, I've met so many wonderful people here. And I, I love my neighbors. I love my neighborhood. I love the businesses. I love the architecture. I love the river. I love the nature. And I love the beach. And I just love so much about this area. And then I started talking to ghosts and then go figure, I knew two of them from a past life. <laughs> so <laughs> who knows who's next, right? <laughs> um, I'm just going through comments again. Uh, does Jay have karmic ties uh, with Wilmington? I don't know, actually. I don't know. Do I feel this George situation was a test for me? Hmm. <laughs> uh, a test in perspective. I feel a lot smarter now. Um, I feel less weighed down. I feel more confident in my abilities. I feel more confident in asking those around me for help when I need it. And that's always a lesson. That's a lesson that I've had to learn over the years. Um, and it was certainly a lesson to trust new people. And um, like 
Alice, for example, I've known her less than a year and I would trust her with my life. Like, <laughs> uh, I talk to her every day. Same thing with Sorsha. Sorsha I've only known for two years and I, I feel so incredibly close. And, um, I mean, while I'm on the subject of people who I, I've met who've been wonderful, Kat, who's spooktastics, uh, Miss Lily, who I call Welsh mother, um, like this has been a really unique experience. And it also, it was certainly a test for Rupert. Uh, he's only leveled up since then. I'm in my next, like, I'm gonna say that the playlist right now, the Ghost Gets playlist, which I'm gonna be adding to every day, but this week, by the way, on more information on George and what happened, things that I didn't tell you before. But um, that's gonna be Ghost Gets 1. I'm gonna be making Ghost Gets 2. And that is going to start off with all the new cool things that Rupert could do after the full moon of Scorpio, because he's been working with Hecate. Uh, it, it's gonna have to do with my growing friendship with Alice and Sorsha. Um, it's, it's going to be me dealing with, in part, my mental health following everything that had happened and me being honest with myself. And you're, you're going to see my time recovering. So that way, hopefully, when you see that, you're also gonna be like, oh, that's why she's okay now, because she spent that time recovering. And that was, once again, over the last four to six months. So, yeah. Yeah, for anybody who just saw the thing, that in all fairness might have been dust because there's like some fuzzies that are moving around here, but I did see it on the screen. I was like, oh, but then I was like, oh, no one's with me right now. <laughs> like Rupert's over there. Um, Jimothy is out. Um, and the other uh, residential spirits, we have a happy cohabitation of not sharing spaces unless we're having a conversation. Very much like roommates. Um, so, oh, well, thank you for thanking me for sharing my experiences. I, I put a lot of thought into what I share and the reason why I share it is, you know, for some people they're like, I don't believe you. And I'm like, that is okay. That is okay. I'm not out to make people believe in anything because I think people should believe what they think is true for themselves so long as it doesn't hurt other people. For me, my content is if people watch it and they're entertained, great. You know, if they're watching it and they're like, whoa, this is, this is a riveting story, great, cool. I, I did my job as a content creator and that also matters to me. Um, but if at some point somebody sees a ghost, and they didn't believe in ghosts, and now they're seeing a ghost, and they think, oh wait, Rebecca's content said that I don't have to be afraid of everything just because I don't understand it. I've done my job. That's what I want. I want people to not be afraid. That's it. And then even moving forward, whether it's through spiritual connection or a relation that you have with somebody, you know, in the physical, if somebody can look at my experience and say, hey, huh, I'm seeing some red flags. Why do I recognize this? Oh, because I watched that one girl who was talking about a ghost. But wait, th this, is, this is happening to me right now. Maybe I should back up. I've done my job. That's what I want. Um, we're, we're, in, we're in an era where we need to find peace where we can, where we need to find balance where we can, where we need to find self-worth where we can. So that's what I want. That's what I want for people. So I'm, I'm glad that me sharing my story has helped for those who it has helped. And if it has merely entertained you all this time, that's great too. We need, we need good stories. So um, it, it just means a lot that you would think mine would be good. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so let's see. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's see. Do I believe that we are at a tipping point in the battle of good and evil? I believe in balance. Um, so I believe that for what balance is not right now, balance will be restored. There, in my humble opinion, and this is just me, if we don't know 
what it's like to be in darkness, we won't appreciate the light. So, and darkness doesn't have to be bad, right? Like I, when I'm doing like ghost things and stuff like that, I don't care if you put me in a dark room, like it doesn't matter to me. I'll sit there either with my eyes open or closed and just sit there and be like, okay, who wants to talk? Like, um, maybe it's not good and evil. Maybe it's a different kind of equivalency. But I think we are in an age where more people are opening up to their personal truths. And the more that we share those experiences with one another, the more we will find common understanding with one another. And it won't make everybody angry. We'll just be able to be like, whoa, you believe that, you know, Mars is controlling the moon and giving us messages? Cool. P.S. I totally made that up. I, I have no idea. Um, but once again, if somebody came up to me and they said, that's what I believe, I would be like, okay. That's, that's interesting. I, I don't believe that, but that belief doesn't hurt me. So, cool. I, I think we're in a new age of that understanding, rather than shoving our beliefs down other people's throats. <laughs> Um, so, yay, I'm, I'm glad that, I'm, I'm helping people not be so afraid, that means a lot to me. Uh, let's see. See, I'm just looking through comments. Oh, here's a good question. Um, can you still be what I imagine you're saying is spiritually awake, but also believe in science and uh, medics? Yes. Um, I I read science daily, like like the Science Daily site. Uh, I I love facts. I I love how we are trying to make an understanding of our world. And for anybody who's like, there are no studies on ghosts. Those don't exist. That's not scientifically accurate. Keep looking. Keep looking. And I hate that I can't cite my sources right now, but there have been scientific experiments that prove that there's energy out there. Now science can't prove personality yet. But we're getting there. I always say um, my belief, like what I believe in, is I believe in the darkness behind the, the stars, the black that's back there. What is it? We don't know yet. We have ideas. We have theories. We can talk about them, but uh, we don't always know. And I think that's awesome. Because that's where spirituality is. That's where the theories are. That's where we can come to each other and talk to one another and be like, hey, what do you think is behind the stars? We can't see it yet. We don't have the telescopes yet. We have an idea, but we don't really know. So at some place, the universe ends. Then what? So maybe that's where spirituality is. Maybe it's a dimension. Maybe we're all on top of dimensions, on top of each other. And we're all just trying to make sense of stuff. I believe in science. I believe in psychology, by the way. Uh, I, that this is why I'm an advocate for mental health. Um, I've been tested for all kinds of things by my own volition, not other people being like, wow, I think you got this. No, I tested myself because I just wanted to be sure. Mediumship works differently. So yeah, don't, don't be afraid of facts, but do be afraid of doubting yourself believe in you. That's, that's what I'm always going to say. Believe in you. Um, yeah. So let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, by the way, Miss Lily, I'm going to add you as a moderator. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. If you hate it, I can like, uh, <laughs> remove that later. I think I'm pretty sure. Um, because I know you and you're on here often and I really appreciate that and you're answering questions. So uh, moderator status for you. Um, so can't wait to hear more about Rupert's new position and happenings. I will share with you what I can. Um, he, 
<laughs> he has allowed me to share a lot of personal things. Uh, but when it comes to his work and specifically what he does, I know he's going to start being a bit more strict on what I share with everybody else. So I will give broad strokes on some of the things that he does and go from there. <laughs> um, basically, the rule with spirits is if they told us everything, if they told us all the truth, we would think that they were crazy and then we would think that we were crazy. But if we come to the conclusion on our own, they then have a choice to affirm or deny it. So I have asked Rupert so many questions. I don't know why he puts up with me at this point because I'll just be like, so tell me, what do you think about this? And he'll be like, what? And I'll be like, no, 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 no. Go with me on this. Crazy theory, right? Crazy theory. But what do you think about this? And then he can sit there and be like, Um, so, yeah, last time I checked, he does enjoy his new job. Um, he, for lack of better terminology, kicks ass. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm just checking a few things. Yep. And do, 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 do. Um, Rupert's thoughts on quantum physics. I haven't explained it yet because I don't think I'm good enough to explain it myself. <laughs> but I do, I watch a lot of YouTube videos from uh, sources that have, like, vetted sources. So we learn a lot about geography. We've been learning a lot about history. Um, I love those subjects in particular. I love maps. And um, we learn about psychology some. We learn about science. Um, Kat has been cool enough to send me random photos of really weird looking animals. That's always been interesting. Um, so, yeah. The coast world sounds like a lot like the military. Ask a lot of questions and hope you can glean info. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Oh, here's a common question. So somebody said, are there jobs in the afterlife? Not like the, the jobs that you have right now. And it's always a choice. And by the way, you don't even have to stay in the afterlife. Um, I call it the in-between because for most people, it is an in-between. Um, in between your other lives. Why do you suck like all of the feeling out of my legs? Look at this little punk. Oh my goodness. Um... So yeah, for anybody who's like, oh no, I have to work in the afterlife. No, you don't. You really don't. Um, if you want to gain knowledge and potentially powers, yeah, there's a give or take with that. But um, no, you don't have to. <laughs> I don't see why you have to. Um, do, 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 do. Small potato. You are small pumpkin cat. You are small pumpkin potato cat. You're so tired. Why are you so tired? What have you done today? You slept. That's what you've done. Okay. And now you're sleeping on me. Um, okay, I'm going to check my questions, make sure I've gotten through everything. And if you're just joining, remember I post all of my recorded lives to my YouTube. And if you haven't caught up on all the wild things that have happened to you, George, and all of that stuff, that is also on my YouTube. And if you're wondering how all this happened with George, how did he turn into a bad guy or whatever, I'm going to be sharing stories that I have not talked about in detail on TikTok yet. And that's going to be every day this week at noon Eastern Standard Time. Or at least by noon Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, Wilmington, North Carolina has so many historical sites. Lots and lots of ghosts. Um, and a lot of, like, aware ghosts, which is cool. Some ghosts are just like, I don't know where I am. And it helps to be a medium or to be a spirit that cares, like Timothy and Rupert, um, even Molly. Um, I think of Alexander, a Adam. Like, that, it helps when we go to places where there are confused spirits because we can be like, oh, you don't know where you are? Okay, well, let's talk about it. <laughs> um, sometimes the greatest help you can give a spirit is just by treating them like a person <laughs> because most of them are people. Um, remember, souls were all inside of something at some point, so uh, just a little decency can go a long way. Um, yeah, so... 
does Rupert still stay with me since his new position? Yeah. <laughs> um, he, he has other things to do, most of which are after I'm asleep. And he doesn't have to do them all the time. Even, even with his work. One, he cares about it. But two, it's also a choice. You know, if something were going on in my life and he felt uh, that I needed help or for whatever reason, um, I feel like he could absolutely put in a word and be like, hey, can this wait? Can I come back later? Though I'm also getting from him right now. He's just like, I would wait for you to go to sleep. <laughs> and then I would go. Um, but also, like, for the times where I've woken up at night and I'm like, oh, he's not in the house. Um, if I get a feeling of concern, I can always ping him and be like, hey, are, are you okay? And uh, he responds. It's kind of like a text message, but it's telepathic. Um, and... You know, he'll respond and be like, yes. And I'm like, okay, you're, are you having a good time? And he'll just be like, yes. <laughs> be like, okay, well, have a good night. He's like, good night. <laughs> um, he is with me right now. Uh, he's over there. Um, can I communicate with my cat spirit? So that is a talent. Um, cat or animal communication is a thing. Um, I can communicate with him using some clear cognizance um but for the most part he's pretty chill he is pretty good about um projecting his thoughts <laughs> so <laughs> Rupert people are saying hi um let's see have I heard of dying men cursing the one who killed them in war I mean I'm not at everybody's I, I don't it's hard to know what people do in their last minutes, so sure, it could be possible. But I imagine that a lot of people, after they pass, if they get the choice to go see their loved ones, why wouldn't they do that instead? A lot of them are fighting to keep their loved ones safe. So they may not want to go through with a curse. They might just want peace, like for themselves. But sure, I imagine some people um, do that. <laughs> How do you feel knowing how badass you are, Rupert? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that got him. He, he did like one of these. He was like. <laughs> um, do you want to respond or do you just want to, <laughs> or do you just want to laugh about it? Uh, like, what? <laughs> He, he says what he does is sufficient enough for what he feels is necessary. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, somebody said Rupert is the model man. I won't tell Jimothy. But he's not here right now. So I'm actually going to have a drink from this because I've been holding it for this entire time. Um, hi, Jeremy. Hi, other people. Um, yeah, somebody was like, doing my job, ma'am. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. <laughs> if and when, somebody said, if and when I have sons, stories about Rupert and Jimothy are the bedtime stories they get. Okay, that made him happy. He was like, because there's a moment where he's just like, what? And then I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, that's a compliment. And he, he was just like, he was like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody said sufficient equals badass. <laughs> um, I am writing a book actually, and uh, okay, goodbye, goodbye, buddy. Um, so if you want to know when that comes out, it will be on my website newsletter. That's corksandconjure.com. It's also linked in my link tree on my bio. And I also plan on giving some sneak peeks to my Patreons as a little gift. So um, I may even do that starting at the lowest tier, which is $5 a month. So yeah, I think I might do that, even if it's just like a few pages at a time. Um, so yeah, I am in the second draft of the book, which is very exciting. And I also plan on making an audiobook uh, that I'll read most of it, I guess. Um, 
and ask for forgiveness for my accents. Oh my goodness. Uh, but yeah, um, that's very exciting. And of course, if you've not checked out my YouTube yet, you I, I recommend it because there's a lot of stuff on there that will give you more information on the stories that you've been hearing on TikTok, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so <laughs> somebody asked, is Rupert proper all the time? He's not. <laughs> um, he has a very small circle of close friends and uh, he gets... He has a very funny sense of humor. Um, that's that's all. That's what I can say about that. <laughs> um, and that's the thing. In my next content, like when I make a Ghost Gets playlist, it'll be number two because um, I feel like George is a proper ending for that. Um, I'm gonna get into more humor side of Rupert. He is sarcastic sometimes um he has this kind of dry wit where he's very pointed when he says something and um it's yeah it's him um but yeah Ooh, is kid on here did i miss that spooky kid yay uh, kid, we need to do a live together so that you can answer your own questions on Driver. Because for anybody who's like, whoa, I want more Driver content. Dude, Driver doesn't talk to me. <laughs> I've made videos about this. He's very much just like, I talk to Kid because I like Kid. And I'm like, oh, so you hate me. And he's like, no, you're annoying. I'm like, great. Uh... <laughs> Slash kid, if he's with you right now, that would be really hilarious. If he's hearing me, be like, um, but yeah, okay, kid, we'll go live again soon. I really look forward to that. Uh, let's do that. Yay! Um, I can have you over to the house. That'll be fun. Um, but yeah, I there's kid, and by the way, you remember this day when you came over to the museum, and like driver was trying to communicate with you more. And he was succeeding, um, but <laughs> do you remember um, Driver, because he had punched out Rupert before, even though Rupert had this level up and like Driver had even acknowledged that and he was just like, hey, I know what you did. Um, I still think you're what you are, but um, that's not the word that he used. But um, yeah, he's like, I know what you did. That was good. You still suck. Like, that's basically what he said. I wrote it down. But um what the day that kid and i were talking and driver was hanging out with kid and rupert was hanging out with me and basically driver and rupert were just like bad mouthing each, each other the whole time it was so like stupid um <laughs> i referred to it as like two two like roosters just like you know kicking dirt behind themselves for no effing reason and at one point like, Rupert did something that was, I was just like, Rupert! Um, he, like, put his arm around my shoulders, and I was just like, oh, okay. And I looked over, and Rupert only did it to make a point to Driver. He puts an arm around my shoulder, and he says, see that? She can feel that. She can feel me there. And I was like, oh my god! <laughs> like, stop using me to make a point! <laughs> this is so rude! Um... And of course, Driver kept going in. He was like, I already punched you before. I already punched you before. I could punch you again. And Rupert was like, okay, okay, fine, fine. And then basically, Kid and I hung out for like, what, six hours that night. We got tacos, which is also hilarious. If you know the whole Driver fiasco story, that's on TikTok. It wasn't long ago. So if you haven't seen it, do check, uh, do check that. But uh, yeah, basically... <laughs> At the whole night, Rupert and Driver were just like, hmm. they were just sizing each other up, but like in a playful way. Uh, <laughs> like by the end, Driver just kept being like, no, I could still take you. I could still take you. And Rupert's like, I'll come back later. I'll come back later. We'll see. We'll see. So basically, Kid and I go home and apparently they met up later but i think it was more of a friendly conversation because rupert knew how to do a few 
ghost talent things, I guess, that Driver was curious about. And so rather than Driver ending up throwing a punch, uh, he basically was just like, you know, I already punched you out. If I ever need to tell every ghost in Wilmington that I have already taken you out, I don't, I don't need to prove myself again. And Rupert's like sitting there post full moon. So he has like these new power things and he's just like, yeah, okay, sure. You tell yourself that, you tell yourself that. And then they had drinks and it was fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, glad everybody got a happy ending. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Rupert has no beef. <laughs> Is Rupert a cat person or a dog person? I once asked him what his favorite animal is and he was like, why would I have one? And I was like, why not? And he says, a horse, because they're practical. Because you can use them for something. It's like, okay. <laughs> um, I would label him more as a cat person. I found Roger sitting in his energy more than a few times. So, um, am I the only one in my family who can see ghosts? Well, I don't talk to a lot of my family, um, but I have some confirmation that some of them have and they've turned that off. Um, I am, however, very grateful that my immediate family is wonderful and um, they're very accepting, even though they don't understand everything. They're all very accepting and I, I really appreciate that. Um, uh, Arnold says, hello, Rupert. Uh... Kat, you and I have been talking, you know what I'm talking about, but Rupert was just kind of like, like the expression that he gave was one of the, we're going to do it. <laughs> um, and when I say do it, I mean like there's something that I cannot share with all of you right now uh, because it is private. It might be public later, but uh, Kat knows about it. <laughs> um, more ass kicking. That's what I'll say. It is just more ass kicking. <laughs> Uh, Rupert's kind of like, yeah, he's not quite doing this, but he's just kind of like ass kicking. Um, so he also did not say ass kicking. I said ass kicking. He's, he's saying I'm getting flustered again. Okay. So cool. Um, let's see. I think spirits can influence living people that possess I don't know. Um, I think sometimes influence can feel like possessed, but I think there's always a piece of us in there. Um, I know deities can do things or make people forget stuff, but it's never for long because they've got stuff to do. So yeah, I'm just going through the comments. Hey, soul signs hypnosis. I mentioned you earlier because somebody asked about my past life regression. Um, so yeah, let's see. Um, goodness, it's such a party in here. Uh, do, 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 do. So what I'm allowed to say about Rupert's new position, I will have to check with him for what's appropriate that I can share. Um, and I will be sharing that in the Ghost Kids playlist number two when I make that. When I make that. I'm kind of taking a new direction with how I do these reenactments, so... I hope everybody likes them. But yeah, that'll be coming out at some point. I don't know. Can you tell the ghost cats I said hi? Where are the ghost cats right now? There's one in our back closet. I think there's one in the room on the other side and there's one downstairs. Hi. They're asleep, okay. I, I, you know, ghost cats are cool, they'll just, even though they don't need to sleep, they will appear like they are sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, wow, so much good conversation happening in my comments. I'm having trouble keeping up. Um, but yeah, for anybody who's just joining, hey, uh, I will be posting videos every day on a lot of own, unknown stuff involving George that I have never shared publicly before to help everybody understand further of how bad of a guy that he was and how messed up things had gotten and that's why things happened the way that they did 
And here's just another remi reminder, if you're just joining, that this will be recorded and posted on my YouTube as soon as I can get it up. And yeah, a lot of questions. I've answered a lot of questions involving George and that sort of thing. And I'm, I've got a few more videos on that. As I said, uh, every day this week I'll be posting a video um, that are all ready to go. I've already released them on Patreon because um, for the early content, tier on patreon they don't have to wait they get like six to ten videos all at once so they just get to sit down and you know watch 20 to 30 minutes of content whereas um other folks just have to wait a day between each video so um they know what's coming but yeah uh, i think i've covered everything um tomorrow is is my writing day so i'm, I'm very excited about that uh, I'm going to assume that all of you wish uh, Molly a good hello because <laughs> I'm going to see her at some point tomorrow. Um, so I will let her know. And um, let's see, I'm seeing a few things. I do offer readings and mediumship stuff for people. I went into more detail on that a little bit earlier in the live and I've got some videos up on my website. But if anybody wants to visit my website, you're welcome to do so. It is quirksandconjure.com. That is linked on my link tree in my bio. Yes, all the people saying hello to Molly. Um, I'm gonna do another live where I show Molly's wall and how it's grown from her gifts and things, which she does visit and likes to rub into people's faces that these are her gifts. And um, I'm also gonna show you my wall for letters that have been written to me. And um, I, I'll show Jimothy's wall as well. And Rupert has a few things, but I was like, do you want me to put them on the wall? And he was like, no, put them in a drawer. That's where these, that's where private correspondence belongs. And I was like, cool. <laughs> he wasn't that angry about it, but he was just like, why would I want my private correspondence on a wall? And I was like, <laughs> um, so yeah, well, uh, I think I will leave this from here, but thanks so much for joining everyone. I hope you enjoyed a live that it was just me for once. I know I'm going to have some more lives coming out. Uh, hopefully with Hannah. We've talked about doing a dating game. or um, She's going to give Jimothy advice and I'm going to channel Jimothy. Um, and we're going to make it a drinking game. So bring your favorite drink, even if it's tea. That totally works. Water works very well. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for your support. Thanks everybody for joining. Thank you my moderators, uh, Kat and Miss Lily and Kid. Thank you so much for joining. And I wish you the best as we move forward. So yay. Thanks. Have a good night, day, wherever you are. Bye. How do I turn this off? There it is.